It is likely that power from SSP systems in space would be transmitted to Earth using a low-intensity microwave beam. Past research confirms that no negative effects are expected and that the low-intensity microwave beam used for sending power down from space would be much safer than many other forms of energy in use today. However, even though most households already use microwave technology, its use for long-distance power transmission will most probably raise concerns about the possible effects of microwave energy on living things. In this next segment, you'll see how NASA is investigating the potential effects of microwaves on plant life. It is believed that still more research will be needed to assure the future safety of microwave power beaming. Not much is known about how plants, animals, and humans will respond to continuous microwave exposure. Our experiment will show how an important plant species will respond to continuous exposure to microwaves. Our hypothesis is that plants exposed to microwaves will be no different from those plants that are not exposed to microwaves. The microwaves for this experiment are generated by a device something like that in your cell phone. This microwave generation device is called a voltage control crystal oscillator, or VCO. Microwaves at 2.45 gigahertz and at 1 to 10 milliwatts per square centimeter intensity are generated in the oscillator, passed through a short cable, and are broadcast over the growing plants by the antenna or emitter horn. The microwaves are then bounced off the adjustable reflector, thus exposing the test plants to the microwaves. Note that the plants growing behind the metal sheet or shield, the control plants, do not receive any microwave exposure. The experiment is designed so that the only variable to which the plants are subjected is microwave exposure. A plant representative of important agronomic species is alfalfa. The plants are grown in a potting mix in plastic pots. A measured amount of soil is placed in each pot. A measured amount of alfalfa seed is placed in each pot and the soil is moistened. The light necessary for photosynthesis is supplied by an overhead rack of fluorescent tubes and several incandescent light bulbs. To test the hypothesis, precise measurements are taken of the control and experimental plants. Variables measured include gas exchange. Another variable measured is leaf chlorophyll concentration. Also measured are gross plant variables such as stem length, internodal distance, and overall vigor. These experiments are ongoing and will be expanded to include mixes of plants and growth of plants from seeds whose progenitors were exposed to the same level of microwave frequency and intensity. These studies will help determine whether plants can grow in an environment of sustained microwave illumination.